monthly series that I like to do every month. I just like to reflect on the month. So I'll talk about my favorites of that month. It's gonna be a mix of like random things that I like and that I got for Christmas, but also things that I feel like can apply to everyone and you don't really need to buy these things. It's just like here, these are things that I noticed that help and I feel like I wanna share. I like to go through every favorite. So I'm gonna be talking about my hair favorites, my hair tips hair lessons, hair struggles, my favorite movies, my favorite music, food, random items. And we're gonna talk about the lessons that I learned and all the mistakes I made and what I feel now after hitting 100K. Like talking about all the goals that I accomplished this year and the things that I didn't. So we're just gonna be having a reflection period, period, period. Period, period. <laughs> we're just gonna reflect on December and the year and then we're gonna close it at the end to talk about some goals that we want to accomplish for the next year and next month, which is going to be the month of my birthday, which is crazy. I'm gonna be 25 freaking years old. Oh my gosh, yes, I know, I know. I'm surprised too. I know I look like I'm 12, okay? Like, okay, we <laughs> get it now. Yes, I'm gonna be 25 next month. So, we got a lot of talking to do. There's a lot of things we gotta go over for this month, this whole year. I wrote a lot of stuff down. So, if you would like to reflect on the previous month and year and maybe get some inspo of your own and motivation and stuff like that then uh let's go girl and boy and alien and whatever you are whoever you are watching oh i also forgot to say i'm gonna be doing all that while i do my hair let me not forget i totally forgot that i was doing my hair already so i decided i'm gonna try this hairstyle it's kind of similar to a hairstyle i've done in the past but it involves like more braids. I was thinking, oh, I don't want to do this because I did something similar, but I was just like, whatever. I really want to try this hairstyle out and it's something that I think will be cute. The first favorites of this year are black owned products. That was very important this year and it should have been important overall. It kind of sucks that it took this year for us, for me personally to really think like, hey, it would be good for me to actively be looking out at specifically black owned brands. You know, smaller brands that are black owned or minority that really like don't get, you know, the advertising or just get the support that they deserve. It sucks that it took police brutality and just craziness to happen. Like, it sucks to think about what happened this year. I don't even like talking about it. It was such a very dark and frustrating and emotional time. I'm happy that showing support to the black community and black owned businesses, it became something that was placed on importance. And I made sure after that, whenever I'm looking at any specific brands, that I want to first check to see if there's a black owned brand out there. Or like I said, any minority brand that I can try first and try to support as much as I can. Honestly, I subconsciously stopped using any hair care product that wasn't black owned except for Dove, which I still use every now and then. So yes, Curl Mix is black owned. Yes, Natural Club is black owned. What's another one that I like? I do like the main choice, even though I don't use them as much now because I've been leaning toward using a lot more products that have natural ingredients because I just noticed the effects it has on my hair. Long-term effect, just the look of it, the feel of it. So I feel like it's fine. Like I still like the main choice and I still will use it. But the products that I use the most, like I've said in the past, I wanna make sure it has natural and clean ingredients in it. So oh, Grace Allie is black owned. The nightcap that I use. Right here, my favorite cap that I always use that is satin line inside. Melanin Hair Care obviously is black owned, which I love. That's another hair brand that I enjoy. Briojo is another brand that I like. I haven't restocked on those products, but I did use most of it. So those are the top black owned brands that I personally like for me that I've tried. There's obviously so much more out there, but I'll say those are at the top of my list. So my second favorites of 2020 are conditioners. Conditioners, conditioners. I get a lot of questions a lot of questions on what is your top favorite product? What is one product you couldn't live without? What is your holy grail product? How does your hair stay so moisturized? All of these questions, let me just put it simply like this. Conditioner is moisture. Moisture is conditioner. You will never struggle with moisture problems 
or just dry hair, period. Well, sometimes it depends, obviously the weather, but your hair will never be lacking in moisture as long as you make sure to properly condition your hair and just condition your hair like often. That's literally it. That is why most of the time I don't really struggle with dry hair problems unless like I'm doing like a lot of styles on my hair. I know what the reason if my hair is dry. I feel like I know like okay my hair is dry because I need some conditioner in it. That is the tea. That is the secret to keeping moisturized hair proper conditioned hair is how your hair stays moisturized. And when it comes to conditioners, it's not just one conditioner. For your hair to be properly conditioned, it needs to be properly conditioned in the shower and out the shower. That is why using like a deep conditioner is very important as you guys hear most naturals. That is like the thing, we're not just saying that. Like deep conditioning is very, very good to give you long lasting moisture and hydration within your hair. But also like everything, you have to lock in that moisture. And typically it helps to put a leave in conditioner after you get out the shower, keep your hair properly conditioned to keep the moisture lasting longer, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're doing a deep conditioning that's a treatment you're doing for your hair even if you're regular conditioning both things you eventually wash out right so yes you're giving it's like giving your hair like a little mask just like you have a face mask it's giving our hair a treatment to get give us a deep conditioning but at the end of that you keep it in your hair for however long and then you rinse it out so that is obviously not going to stay in your hair like obviously your hair is treated but your conditioner is rinsed out at that point so you need an actual leave-in conditioner again i'm not a scientist here if you want to look up like the pr correct actual science to it all <laughs> then by all means just go on google and look it up but that's why it's important to use a leave-in conditioner once you get out the shower after you condition your hair so then your hair can be coated with conditioner and it can give a lasting conditioning effect on your hair therefore your hair is not easily you know it doesn't dry up easily I'm so bad at multitasking. Actually, I, I'm, I tr I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Let me think about what I'm trying to do with my hair. This is what happens when you just think of a hairstyle. Like, I just thought of this hairstyle, um, and I was like, hmm, in my head, and I was like, hmm, let me try it out. But now I'm getting confused. Okay, cool, we got that. I've always said this, but if you were to tell me I could only live with only one hair product, I would pick a conditioner. I would probably pick a leave-in conditioner because at least I mean, well, actually, I'm not sure. Well, I would choose a regular conditioner because if need be, I could just use a regular conditioner as a regular conditioner and a leave-in conditioner if I needed to, which I used to do when I was first transitioning. I would say, if you can, I would have a regular conditioner, a deep conditioner, and then a leave-in conditioner. A regular conditioner because I like to use that to co-wash my hair, which I like to do midweek. Oh my gosh, I'm so terrible at this. I use a deep conditioner for wash day, which I shampoo. I use a regular conditioner for the middle of the week to give my hair a refreshing and just a quick co-washing to refresh my curls, my scalp, give my hair a nice conditioning. Giving your hair a midweek refresh is very important rather than just layering on more products in it. At least for me, I think it is a convenience thing. Obviously, if you can't do, like it's fine, but that's why I notice my hair is usually, it stays conditioned and I don't struggle with dryness problems unless I'm going off of my regular routine. That's why I don't really struggle with much breakage or any really problems or struggles with my hair. I feel like that's why it's in a healthier state. It's growing at a you know consistent pace. I'm good with length retention and moisture retention, all that stuff like that, because I condition my hair very well. Okay, anyways, that was a long explanation. Also, lastly, I have started using regular conditioner like on my wash days sometimes because let me tell you, like I'm in the house most of the time, so sometimes I may not feel like doing the whole deep conditioning routine on my wash days. Sometimes I'm just lazy. And using a regular conditioner to wash out my hair is sometimes the most convenient, which is fine. Because honestly, I mean, you don't really need to deep condition your hair weekly. It is good for your hair, especially if you struggle with dry hair and you're transitioning. It just, it has a lot of benefits, but you'll be okay um depending on like if you're not outside a lot in the cold you know with your hair drying up it just depends on everybody's hair 
Oh, I feel like I'm rant ranting, but you, I hope this helps. I, I'm pretty sure that should, that makes sense. But you could definitely just deep condition your hair bi-weekly, like regular condition your hair one week and then deep condition it the next week and then regular condition one week and then deep condition, like you could do that rather than deep conditioning every week if you want to, or sometimes I just mix it up depending on just how I feel, okay? But I do try to deep condition weekly because I can feel the difference. Deep conditioning keeps my hair like deeply moisturized for a longer time, especially my scalp. All right, moving on. My third favorites of 2021 are 90s hair accessories. I'm not gonna go over all of my favorite ones because I did a whole video on my favorite accessories. But I just love, you know, the regular 90s accessories, the butterfly clips, the, the regular little clips, the hair scars, bandanas, the claw clips, all that stuff. Love it. And I just discovered something recently um, for my holiday hairstyles video. I went to Michael's and I just bought like random items that I thought I could use to DIY my own hair accessories. I mean, I feel like I've done something similar in the past, but I actually like really tried to look for creative things to use to DIY my own hair products. And it turned out pretty good. Now I'm thinking I wanna go to Michael's like all the time. Not all the time, but I definitely wanna start doing that more. I did that in another video as well. I'll probably link it around here somewhere. But that is just like a really nice idea, unique idea if you want like to be more creative with the hair accessories, if you want to DIY your accessories, if you're into creative stuff like that, like me and being unique. And then it also saves you money because you know some hair accessories are a little expensive depending on where you go. So yeah, that's just been my favorite that I've discovered and I would definitely be going to Michael's again to try to DIY my own. The fourth thing is my detangling brush. This right here, I love this. I know I talked about it in my favorites video, but I had to put it in here. It is a game changer, okay? This has cut down my detangling process in half. It really, really works. The next thing that I've been loving, coloring your hair, but not actually permanently. Like all the things they've been having for you to color your hair, the rinse out hair color, the hair coloring gel, the hair coloring spray the hair coloring wax. I just love that because it gives your hair like personality <laughs> and it's fun. That's another old school trend that came back. Just having different sections of your hair colored. And I think it's so cute, creative, very artsy looking. They all transfer a little bit, which is like, okay, there's not gonna be any perfect one. But for the most part, I'll say, I haven't tried the waxes, but I did like the, what is the, it was the orange one that I tried. That didn't transfer that much. And I kept that in my hair for like two to three days. But the spray that I had, these by, Ava NYC. I love these so much because they're so pigmented and they look so pretty. But if you put too much, they do transfer. But it's cute. So would I use it again? Honestly, I would just because it looks so cute. My boyfriend didn't really like it that much because it did transfer because <laughs> I used so much. But I would still use it again because it's just so nice. I don't think I like how this looks. This doesn't look uh, tight enough for me. I mean, I don't want it tight, but I want it like sleek, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm gonna have to definitely cut this out. All right, I redid it now. So it's looking much better. I like it to be really slicked. And now I'm just gonna braid this section. Should I moisturize it before I braid it? Now I guess I can get a little conditioner. Do I have any conditioner around me? Nope, I don't. Darn. Um, I have a little bit of moisturizer. I guess I can use that. I'll just use a little bit. The next thing is online hair product subscriptions. Now, this is something that I did not think that I would ever get into because I felt like it was kind of dumb. <laughs> and I don't really like subscriptions, first of all. I know there's a lot of people who like subscription boxes and like subscriptions to magazines. The only subscriptions I really would like is obviously like Netflix or something like that. But I never really like to be subscribed to stuff just because I'm like, I don't know, like, am I really gonna need to be subscribed to this? Am I really gonna use this every month? But with this year, I already get anxiety when I go to the freaking store, you know? I'm just like not trying to be around a lot of people, but sometimes I have to do what I have to do. 
but it is, it's also nice to know that you don't have to buy your hair product like you can buy them online and not only can you buy them online but you can get subscriptions now with subscriptions you have to really like a product obviously to you know feel like you want to subscribe so pretty much if you don't know subscriptions to hair products is you subscribe to get a hair product every month you can tailor it to how often like you could do once a month you get new products you strip to your door or you get or every two months or every three months whatever you could do it to how you want it but I actually did my first subscription this year which was for the natural all club I subscribed to getting my favorite deep conditioners ever which are the ice cream treatments because once I tried them I was like I need these in my life I know I'm gonna need them every month and I don't want to have to go and buy them every month and then wait for the shipping and blah 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 so i was like you know what let me subscribe and usually the good thing about subscriptions are they usually give you some money off like you save money obviously because they want you to use them um but yeah so it's beneficial to me because it's convenient it's something that i know is going to arrive at my house at a certain time every month or every other month or every three months and i know i always have it so i don't have to go run to the store to get it and it's something exclusively for me and i get my favorite and it keeps me on a consistent schedule with my hair because it's like i know sometimes we run out of hair hair products and sometimes we neglect our hair because we don't have this or that so it's just nice to have um and it's like your own thing now another service i discovered which again i know you guys are gonna be tired of me saying the same products but listen now okay there's people that are product junkies and like to try out the newest things and do all that and i'm just now learning to try new things okay but at the same time i'm not gonna just tell you guys about different products just because it's different like i'm a dedicated product person so if i like a product i will stay dedicated to it i know curl mix came out with something where they if you're subscribed to them monthly or you have like you sign up for a subscription they send you also i think this is a free thing where you get a free what do you call it they'll send you their curl mix fresh which are usually limited edition kits that contain three to four new products and it's released monthly so how cool is that you get your own rare like you get exclusive products but yeah so you get different products so if you guys do like trying new products and this is something for me to like get out of my shell and forces me to try new things when i really don't want to and i think it's just nice but i just have to say even if it's not curl mix or when at natural club just signing up for any of your favorite online subscription places your hair subscription places is really a good idea just so it can just be sent to you conveniently every you know month so you know you have your products and with everything being on lockdown and everything we're about to go into another lockdown i'm sure and uh it's just a convenient way to make sure you have your stuff available for you so yeah it is so hot i'm so sweaty i'm trying to not turn this off actually now the cons of doing these kind of hairstyles that incorporate braids is that they take so freaking long to do so let me hurry up and finish this section i'm pretty sure this video has been already almost 20 minutes i don't even want to look at the time <laughs> and i'm only on this part like what the heck this is the reality of hairstyles though some hairstyles take more time this is already looking cute though Ooh. I'm excited and then at the end I'm gonna just put a little moisturizer at the end and curl it excuse me like that how cute all right I'm gonna do this section and then I'll come back when I'm like to the side cuz I need to speed this up ta-da <laughs> hey it's looking cute so far number seven is trying out different protective styles this year i just decided i wanted to try to do something different than i usually do you guys know i usually do hairstyles for the longest and i was doing kind of the same similar same thing but i wanted to challenge myself to do something different and try out different protective hairstyles i am a wash and go gal okay i love my wash and goes i feel like there are like usually two types of naturals there's one natural who are it's like a protective hairstyle natural and just loves doing protective hairstyles and there's naturals who are and wash and go naturals who love doing wash and goes so now i can say i'm both no i'm just kidding i still love doing wash and goes but now that i've tried i've pretty much tried i feel like most protective styles i try to braid out twist out chunky braid out chunky twist out i did a bantu now which turned out eh, it was it was okay it was an it was a whole experience you can watch that video i'll link it 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 was a 
It was definitely an experience, let me just say that. Doing the protective hairstyles made me have a new respect for them. I see why people do it. I see how it can be convenient for a lot of people because you just do the style and you can leave your hair in the style for a week or to two weeks and not have to do anything to your hair and it's nice. And then you have your hair tucked and protected depending on, you know, of course the weather and stuff like that. And all you have to do is just make sure that you either oil your scalp or put some leave-in conditioner on your scalp to refresh it every now, you know, every other day or every day. And then you're good to go. So, um, I think it's also really good for if you're transitioning as well. Also, trying different ones made me realize which ones that I like the most. Ooh, is this going to look weird? This is just a small section I'll have right now. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but yeah, trying them made me able to see which ones I like the most. And I definitely have to say, I mean, I don't know. Now, I feel like I really like Bantu now, but I really want to try it again. But I feel like my favorite of all was doing a chunky twist out. I just like twist outs because they're quick. And then the fact that I can do a chunky one. I didn't know it was possible for me to do chunky twist outs. Because I felt like the twist wouldn't hold. But that was kind of like my best result. So, I... Uh, my favorite, definitely. The next favorite of the year was turning my wash days into spa days. I'm very happy I found that one article a long time ago. Like, remember, it was my first ever, like, really wash day video. Um, well, I think it was, like, my second one where I decided to start doing the spa day vibes thing because I read that one article. The girl was saying how she likes to look at her wash days as a place of like relaxation and stuff like that so after reading that it just changed my perspective on wash days because before i would dread wash days so much and now i look at it as my form of self-care my time to relax you know and just take care of myself and my hair and that ended up turning into a wash day series that I do every month. It's not the easiest to film, but I do enjoy filming them. And I know you guys like watching them and it motivates you to wash your hair. I get a lot of those comments. I'm happy that I'll be taking that for the rest of my hair care journey because wash days are very important. If you don't do them, you're not going to have the healthiest hair. There's so many. Okay, let me try to hurry up. I, I feel like this video is going to be like an hour long. And speaking of wash days, another favorite thing of mine that I like to do now now is doing my full wash day routine in the shower the pro is once i get out the shower i'm done with my hair i also let my hair air dry i get a lot of questions on that yes i let my hair air dry i do not use a diffuser or anything like that so then after i get out the shower instead of having to like do my wash day routine and then get out the shower then dry off then read to do my hair all over again you know like moisturize it and style it and whatever i could do all that in the shower and then once i get out the shower i'm good to go the cons of it is yes i do use more water and i know there's a lot of people who's like water conscious and you know i'm gonna be honest i'm not perfect with it i try to be more conscious thanks to you guys who like called me out in the past and you know i always try to be but sometimes you could just you know suck at it and that's just something that I am working on. Next is something that I feel like I've never done before until I discovered Curl Mix because I was watching a video when they reached out to me. I watched one of their videos of people using them. I wanted to see how they use the product so then I could make sure I was using the product similar or just using it right in the right way or whatever. And um, yeah, one of the girls was scrunching her curls up and I've always seen that done. But I've only seen it done on like people with loose curls and also like white people or like mixed girls with looser curls. And I guess you could say I have looser curls, but I don't have like two type two or whatever, three, like I have three C, but you know, I still, I just for some reason didn't think that that would work on my hair. But I did it and I feel like I noticed a difference. And I looked up the actual purpose of it and let me read it. It says, the purpose of scrunching your curls is it sets your curls in place when you have wet hair. So it's good to do when your hair is wet after you applied your products, specifically after you put like a gel, if you put like a lightweight gel, um, it helps to set your curls in place and it softens crunchy curls. If you scrunch your hair on dry curls, Oh my gosh, it's so hot. I'm gonna have to probably turn this off. I'm sorry, you cute and all, but you're just too hot. And I'm not trying to have a freaking heat stroke up in here. I don't know, I just feel like once I did it, I just like the way it looks. Like, it just sculpts my curl. 
I don't know, maybe it's just, try it out, maybe, you see? <laughs> and my last hair favorite of 2020 are gonna be my favorite hairstyles. And besides protective styles, which I definitely love to do now, I really, really, really like the 90s hair trends, the hairstyles, the swoops, the twisties, just the whole 90s hair looks. Big hair, the high ponytails, the braids. I love this hairstyle that I discovered this year because it gave me so much volume and it looks so cute. And then I've still been loving the fringe look. The I'm telling you, that is going to be popular next year. I'm calling it right now. I'm not gonna say that I predicted that the swoop was gonna make a comeback, but look at my December hairstyles for last year. And now look, the swoop is here, okay? Also, I do like to look up like trends and stuff, whatever, but yeah, I feel like I was on trend. And I feel like the swoop, the fringe look, the, what is that one haircut called? The like retro like cut, I can't think of it, but I'm gonna have to put it on the screen. You guys know what I mean. But yeah, that's gonna be very big in 2021. And you just know, even with people with curly hair, I feel like people are gonna be actually getting like the bangs cut and it's just gonna be a thing, okay? So I guess next we can go into like random favorites. Let me drink some water, my throat is dry. This is a lot of talking. I'm so scared to see how long this is gonna be. So let's do food. I'm not a big foodie. I don't like to call myself vegan because I do eat honey still and I still use products or certain things that may not be fully vegan. Although my goal is to get like that one day. But I'll say I don't eat meat or dairy. I eat, you know, like a plant-based diet. And on top of that, I have a gluten sensitivity, which means I have to eat food that is gluten-free. And on top of that, I have a nut allergy. So I can't eat any thing that has peanuts or tree nuts in it or I will have a severe react allergic reaction to it and I have to actually carry around an EpiPen so it's serious so I have a lot of uh, food restrictions or just things that I have to look out for like I literally am like yeah I just eat to survive I don't really like I'm not a big foodie because there's just so many things I feel like I have to avoid. But my favorite thing that I discovered, which is like kind of a basic food, but it's sweet potatoes. I've been loving sweet potatoes so, so much. I avoided it for the longest because as a child, I did not like them. And sometimes, you know, as a child, when you remember there's certain foods you don't like, it's hard for you to try it when you get older. I know your taste buds change, but for the longest I was just like, oh, I don't like it. And I'm already a potato fan. Like, I love just regular potatoes, but I know, like, eating them all the time is not really the best. And I know sweet potatoes are a better alternative, but I just never, like, wanted to try it because I remember not liking it. But I finally tried it. I love it. I like to cook it in the oven, and this month I discovered cooking it on the stove, and so it looks like more of a, like, a potato mash. It's a great snack. I eat it for breakfast with fruit and stuff like that, so... It's nice and filling. Also, I've been stocking up on oranges. Not because of just, you know, the obvious situation that we're going through, um, but also because during the cold, I freak out. Like, also, I'm a huge germaphobe as it is, so I, like, legit freak out when it gets to the cold because I know that's when sicknesses come out the most. So I have been stocking up on my oranges to up my vitamin C. I'll eat like one or two oranges a day. I drink a lot of tea. I probably drink like two cups of tea a day and I have lemons that I like to squeeze in my oranges. I mean, my, <laughs> squeeze in my teas. I make sure my boyfriend, I'm like uh, telling him like, did you have your orange of the day? That's what I'll say. Like, did you have your orange of the day? I can tell him he needs to eat an orange a day and make sure he, you know, drink some lemon with in his tea and he just bought me this like lemon squeezer that was, was very convenient so now you know we can get the most juice out of the oranges so I mean lemons oh, oh my gosh okay I'm hungry now at this point <laughs> this is a long video oh my god oh and the last thing is mushrooms very random I know but other than beans and stuff I love mushrooms as a like a little alternative like a meat alternative because the mushrooms have like kind of a meaty texture sort of and yeah i've been loving them uh using them that's another thing that i was like hesitant in trying because as a child i hated mushrooms but now i love them uh just for you know to chop them up and put them in your veggie bowls or get a portobello mushroom and eat you a veggie burger and use that as like a your beer meat 
my mom just made me some fried oyster mushrooms because they have different mushrooms and it tasted legit it was the closest things i've ever tasted to actual meat like it tasted like i was eating some fried chicken um but like that was mostly on the fatty side but it was so good so yeah i've been loving that lately okay this side is already pretty much done if you're still here you're amazing um sorry this video is so long but not really because i feel like this is really cool to just talk and sit and chat so the last favorites are random favorites of mine um first favorite is my robe my boyfriend got me a robe for christmas and i've been really wanting one i will like steal his all the time because he has like a really nice and cozy robe and i'm the type of person that's usually cold all the time like all the time and it's so annoying but i'm just freezing around the house but he bought me a robe and now i'm rarely ever cold and that's not common for me so just a little robe just changes my whole experience <laughs> like i go to sleep in that thing sometimes which is probably he probably doesn't like it but <laughs> i'm like always cozy i can walk around the house without shivering my butt off next thing is my tripod my boyfriend also got me a new tripod it's a tripod that i was using it's broken but i've been like making it work somehow some way i needed a new one so he got me this super nice like professional looking one it does so many crazy things it gets so many crazy angles you can flip it around it's like really really cool it's a lot sturdier i'm just excited to just get different angles it can go super super high and low and blah 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 so love that another thing i really really love fun fact about me is i love really like silly games like i love also like get to know you games and I just like all kind of games and my boyfriend got me um this couple's card game where you just pull you pick a card and it has like a question on it just to like give you guys things to talk about or whatever like it's like juicy question card games that you just sit and talk with your boyfriend they even have one they have family edition they have like a siblings edition or kids edition so it's just really fun I bought one for my family also you could even do that like long distance you could just be on the phone or FaceTime and showing each other the cards and reading the cards and answering like juicy questions and learning about different people whether it's your boyfriend girlfriend whatever sister brother mom oh I'm starting to get hungry and tired and hungry <laughs> I'm probably gonna need to take a break, a, a eating break. So I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna go eat and I'm going to start doing majority of this side and then I'll come back and we will touch on my favorite music and my favorite movies, which are over the last of the favorites. I'm gonna do my little trick again. Whew. I'm back. To you guys, that was a couple of seconds. To me, that was like almost an hour. <laughs> I had to get myself together because like I said earlier, I'm on my period and I kind of just want to lay down and, and take a nap. These braids turned out really cute, but they did take a while. The only bad thing is the perfectionist in me messed up right here and I, I almost took it out. I almost took it, the whole thing out and redid it, but ain't nobody got time for that. It is New Year's Eve and I have a party to get ready to go to, JK, not really. Um, first of all, it's not New Year's Eve. I'm filming this the day before New Year's Eve. And second of all, uh, the only party I'll be going to is the party in my living room. <laughs> Next is going to be music. I have to say I'm very sad because the one person that I was waiting for to put out music... Actually, I was waiting for two people. But the number one person that I was hoping I was gonna get some music from... Riri. Rihanna. I really really wanted her to put out music as I'm sure a lot of you have too <sighs> you know she was a boss woman this year she came out with Fenty Beauty Fenty Skin she killed it you know I still have Fenty Skin that I haven't even tried out oh my gosh I can't believe that just reminded me I need to try those out I don't know why I, I forgot I had them because I got them a while ago so yeah but it's okay a girl can hope maybe 2021 that also I was waiting for Kendrick but it's okay who I did like though. I'm gonna start off with albums. Beyonce's The Lion King album, Ariana Grande's, obviously I have to say her, Mac Miller's album. I can't even listen to that album because it just, uh, if any of you guys are Mac Miller fans or know about, like just listening to the album, it brings a lot of 
feels and emotions and stuff like that but the album is pure art it, it's just great i love selena gomez album too so let me just tell you a little bit about my music taste it's all over the place so <laughs> i like pretty much every genre of music most genres i could find something that i like i'm just very open when it comes to music so those are the, like albums that I could say, but as far as songs, um, I really loved Dua Lupa. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but Don't Start Now. I remember the first time I heard that song, I was in the beauty supply store, and I was like, what is this? I never usually like, you know, you always hear the typical like retail songs they play, but I remember I was like, I think that was when I was I think I was looking for like hair accessories for you guys because I did a giveaway earlier this this year for hair accessories or something and I was just listening to it I was like and it was like vibing and I was feeling myself dancing in the store and I was like this, this song this is, I love the vibe of this song it just seems like a old school vibe I love obviously the typical like all the TikTok songs that blew up whether I liked it or not I heard it enough to start liking it you know like Savage, especially the one featuring Queen B. One No Smoke With Me. <laughs> Doja Cat, all her typical songs like Say So and that, 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 that's my, that, 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 like that, that, repeat. Justin Bieber songs. I don't know why, but I'm surprised I haven't listened to any of his recent songs. Uh, like the ones that are super popular now, but the only one I remember listening to is Yummy and Intentions. E -oh. E -oh. <laughs> you guys know that as well. I don't even know the words, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The box. Oh, also, did they tell you that you're looking for a girl like me? So they tell me that you're looking for a girl like me. Oh my gosh, my voice is so terrible. Black Eyed Peas, I like their album. Their album was pretty good from the songs that I heard. This is a one by a girl that follows me. She actually sent me this song. I don't know if she released this song this year, but I heard it this year and I was obsessed with the song. I'm still obsessed with the song. It's by Simone, I believe. I can't really play it because I'm not trying to get copyrighted, but all the songs I will have like linked in the description box below. But honestly, I feel like I didn't listen to that much music. I realized, you know, the thing is, here's the tea. Me moving in with my boyfriend, everything's pretty much the same except the fact that I realized I listen to less music because he is like a music head. Like he this is the type of person that has to wake up with music, go to sleep with music like do everything with music and I just kind of got used to him playing his music out loud but anyways those are my favorite music I don't have any like new music I've been listening to I kind of just listen to the same people um so those are I feel like that's like a lame list of like favorites but the people I could think of at the top of my head oh I did like this is a very random one I would be surprised if anybody else listens to her it's by Victoria Justice treat myself I love that song so much and I relate to it so well. Okay, I'm gonna go through really quickly um, and say my fave movies of 2020. This one, I, I hope it looks cute. Oh my gosh. Am I gonna make keep it big like this or am I going to... No, I think I'm gonna keep it big like that. I think so. I don't feel like wetting my hair and all that stuff and I kind of like it with volume. Even though the bat, this is like a very old, my hair probably needs to be washed and stuff. Um, I'm thinking, okay, now that I have my hair down, I was trying to see if I wanted to put beads in my hair. I do want to put beads in my hair, so I'm going to quickly put them in right now. And I will see you guys once I finish putting beads in my hair. Alright, so I'm going to do another trick, okay? Ready, set, go. Choo! <laughs> Ta-da! All right, so I found the things and just as a tutorial for anybody who doesn't know how to use it you just put a bead or multiple beads on to here I didn't do one because I wanted to show one for demonstration and then you kind of wrap it around the hair at, at, at the top 
so then it stays and then you pull it and then you get the hair and then you pull make a loop then you get a rubber band put it over that sorry if this is the worst tutorial ever <laughs> And then you just loop it around a couple times. There you have it. Okay, I'm gonna go through the movies really, really quickly. Oh man, is this video like two hours long? This is gonna be so fun to edit and I have to get it out by tomorrow. <laughs> also, I didn't mention, but I have to say, regardless of any controversial opinions, WAP was up there. This is a catchy song. Would I say it was my favorite song? No, but I definitely have to give credit to the song. It blew up. It was like on the top songs. And Cardi B did her thing. So I'm going to go through the movies really quick. The first movie, I feel like, again, is controversial because some people had like issues with it, which there were some things in this movie that I kind of had issues with. Again, it wasn't perfect. But I actually did enjoy Queen and Slim. I feel bad for saying that. Not really. But I think I only enjoyed it the most because one of my man crushes my all-time favorite movie is get out because of him i mean the movie overall was amazing like that was my favorite movie hands down of all time but i do like him as an actor and as a person he's handsome to me and just it's just like i don't know i have a little crushy crush but yeah so i think because he was in there if it was anybody else i don't know if i would have liked it as much but i did like him i like his acting overall and i like the concept of the movie but yes it did need some work but uh it has some potential but mainly i like the video because of him and the woman in there too it was like you know the steamy romance and stuff i loved parasite uh that was a very interesting movie that definitely left an impact that's what i was thinking i was like movies that left an impact on me that's how i know it was my favorite if i have to think about the movie and be like uh i don't remember it that means that it wasn't my favorite because i had to think about it in my head i like the social dilemma i mean i wasn't really shocked with what it told me but it was just nice to be reminded I'm, I'm looking at my mirror right now actually i probably need to watch that thing like once a month the invisible man i really like that even though that seems a little blurry maybe because it came out so earlier this year but i definitely feel like i could say it was like a different kind of horror movie was it would you call it horror or thriller but yeah i felt like it was different so i appreciated that and then the last one i have is host now that movie i feel like i don't like i didn't like the ending of it but everything else about it i liked even though at first it was a little like corny-ish like i was thinking like is this even gonna scare me i felt like i wasn't gonna be scared but then it got real scary real quick i like the concept it tied into you know what we're going through because you know everybody was quarantined and you know it was through a webcam so it felt kind of realistic in a sense which made it even creepier so i loved that i actually i looked up a list of the top movies of 2020 and i felt like because me and my boyfriend always tries to find good movies and it's like we felt like we couldn't like there was no movies to find this year it was rarely any good movies and when i looked up the list of top movies of the year i hadn't seen like any of the movies that, that movie critics and stuff were saying so i'm like what the heck so we're gonna watch those movies and see because maybe i just wasn't looking at in the right places or something i don't know oh i definitely will say i like bad boys too i appreciated the, that movie you know because it was something that we all was looking forward to that was a good movie it was nice to see see them make a comeback together and um those are my faves. I feel like, again, my movie faves and my music faves were off this year because I really was, like, not on top of it. And I was just kind of either working this year or just, like, spending time with my boyfriend. Because this is our first year, like, seeing each other as often, living together. I'm gonna go quickly go through the lessons that I learned this year. Lesson number one, trying new things is not as bad as I thought. 
this year I tried a lot of new things which again it may not be new to that many people but for me I feel like I got out of my shell a little bit I tried to do different videos like new videos I tried to even new protective hairstyles I tried new products which you guys know I was using the same products for the longest but I'm I've tried a whole bunch come on give me my credit I've tried some products this year now okay and you know what? I feel like it's not so bad. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a product junkie, but I don't mind trying out different products here and there. Like maybe trying out one new product or a few new products a month or maybe one, you know, every other month or something like that. Like I'm down for that. Yeah, try new things. Get out of your box. Do more things that scare you, right? That's the motto. This year I learned the importance of self-care, let me tell you. Just because with a whole bunch of things going on in the world, like our mental this year has been on a whole roller coaster ride and if we didn't check back in with ourselves this year you would have drove yourself mad okay i know i would have for sure i had to recoup a lot of times and kind of shut off social media and shut off other stuff my mind and like give myself some care self-care i was watching this one video of this girl she was talking about how self-care is very important it's like how you take care of yourself is going to be how you present to yourself to other people for instance like if you are lacking in your self-care that's going to show like you're going to be irritable you're going to like seem you're going to you're not going to be happy you're going to be like a grouch like not a not good person to be around because you're not taking you have a lot of stuff that you need to take care of and you're like not in a good mood if we're not taking care of ourselves we're usually not going to be in the best mood and i was just telling my boyfriend when i was watching that video i was like that's true because that's how me and my boyfriend are like when he's not taking time for himself to do stuff that he wants and the same for me if i haven't felt like i really did stuff to take care of myself then we're not gonna be the best people for each other to be around because we're both like lacking in that department. And obviously like how are you gonna care about other people if you haven't taken care of yourself, right? Embracing my big hair. I definitely feel like this year was the year of me doing that. In the beginning of the year, I took a break with using gels on my hair because I wanted to see, you know, rock more of my natural my actual natural texture and when I actually stopped using gels I realized how how much uh, volume I had but then I realized that I don't have to completely stop using gels I just have to not use heavy products if I want volume which is you know what I do, do now like if I'm going for volume I'll go for lightweight products like a lightweight moisturizer and a lightweight gel or a lightweight leave-in conditioner and a lightweight gel and my hair is usually big and good so I learned that and I'm so happy because I love my hair big, not super defined. I kind of like it messy and I think it just looks sexy, like I'm into the big hair vibe. Something else that I learned, I remember being young and hearing people like older women say, oh my, I remember when I could just eat anything and it, I, it didn't like show or whatever, or I didn't gain any weight and I always thought that I mean, I've always been kind of a slim girl or skinny girl anyways, kind of-ish. I mean, as far as my body, my face has always been kind of chubby-ish, <laughs> chubby cheeks, but I was thinking like, would that happen to me? Does my body, is, will I really start gaining weight easily? And this year has definitely made me realize that's true. Camera has literally died like five times, so I know this video is long. <laughs> this video is just going to be me complaining about how long this video is. <laughs> But yeah, like I was saying, I definitely noticed that um, the change in my body this year, um, especially looking back at pictures, and it's just weird seeing your body change. And of course, some people may look at me and think, girl, you're still s slim or skinny, blah, blah, blah. But listen, no matter how slim or no matter what size you are, you can notice a difference. And that for me, for me being a person that was like the same size for the longest, and don't get me wrong, I am still the same size, like I haven't moved up a size in my clothing, but I definitely can tell like clothing is tighter, different parts of my, like I'm just not as fit as I used to be, which is okay. Again, this is not something that like shame or anything, but it's me acknowledging it and knowing that I kind of want to change, not because I want to get skinnier, because honestly, I kind of like the extra weight on me. Um, it's just because I've always wanted, you know, to be a little thicker anyways. <laughs> um, not to say that I'm even thicker, but you know, I, I, I like the extra, like, I don't mind getting, gaining weight, but I want to be toned. 
like I want to be fit you know so I want to keep that you know I like miss my legs like I started filming another week in my hair and I worked out for the first time and I jiggled my leg and let me tell you you'll just see that right there what I what I saw that day which was yesterday actually <laughs> made me realize that I need to start working out again because all the muscle that I worked so hard on in the beginning of this year and last year when I used to work out a lot with my friend muscle was gone like poof like it, it disintegrated <laughs> and that's kind of sad because it's like it took like a year plus for me to get you know to that point and now just after this whole time of being in quarantine I just lost it so it kind of you know made me realize like I want to be fit I want to be strong I want to have muscle you know so I need to get back on it and I will so that's just another thing it was just like wow yeah like okay I'm getting to that point to where my body you can't I can't just sit around and eat even though I eat healthy fairly healthy I mean, I eat a lot of potatoes. That's probably another thing that give me, like, I eat a lot of potatoes. But <laughs> other than that, yeah, I can't just, like, sit around and eat whatever and, you know, not expect my body to change, especially if I'm not, like, being active and stuff. Another thing is I discovered that I am a true introvert because how a lot of people are complaining that they can't wait until quarantine is over or the lockdown is over. I'm just sitting here like, you know what? I don't mind. I did not mind being locked in the house, okay? And maybe that's because I have my boyfriend here and I had someone to like talk to. But even then, me and my boyfriend don't be around. Like, we have our moments of togetherness and then we have moments where we're just like, he still works, I still work. So it kind of is like, we don't see each other until the end of the day. So it's like, I still have my personal time, um, unless it's on the weekends when he's off or something. But yeah like i honestly don't mind <laughs> like it's nice knowing that you don't have to go anywhere and you have an excuse to just be home all the time is that bad maybe one thing i guess i do miss is being able to go to the park in nature and not have to worry about wearing a mask or conscious of other people or being crowded and all this stuff like that i do miss like going places and doing stuff like going painting and all that stuff but other than that um for all the introverts out there i'm sure you understand what i mean <laughs> i mean i definitely do miss like you know seeing friend uh, friends my little tight circle my best friend or whatever but um and you know hanging out with family but yeah it, it uh true introvert here definitely i learned what inspired me when i'm feeling uninspired that i did learn i learned that music inspires me um pinterest inspires me and listening to gary v inspires me uh but mainly music like music inspires me so so much whenever i'm lacking inspo i'll just turn on some music and listen to it and i'm a very imaginative in my head type of person so i feel like music brings me back to my creative imaginative personality whatever a few more things i learned that having true supporters is much more valuable and fulfilling than having a lot of selective supporters so i'll say i learned that having a few or smaller amount of true supporters is a lot more valuable and fulfilling than having a lot of selective supporters true supporters are the ones that actually come and will literally watch whatever video of me you will watch whatever video i put out you just like me because you like my personality and you like my quirkiness and my weirdness and my corniness and my loudness and my all over the placeness <laughs> and um yeah and you're just like legit like a friend and you really just enjoy me and i really really appreciate that and selective supporters are the people that come for different stuff for different reasons like my hair content you know a lot of people may not watch me if i don't put anything hair based out or some people only like my watch day videos some people only like my hairstyles so and nothing wrong with those people either i mean there's some pe people that i watch only for specific things so it's okay like i don't mind that but i realized that <sighs> at first i used to really want like when i look back on my like i was watching my video of saying the end of just creations 
video, which I feel like I want to actually do a video about that, like an update on how I feel about that. But when I first, when I reached 100K and I, at the beginning of the year, when I wanted to have 100K followers so bad, just so I could have that number when really it didn't mean much, you know, because within that 100K followers, it was a mostly selective supporters. <laughs> I'm sorry if that comes off bad. That's just the best way I can explain it. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I realized that I want, I want my percentage of following to be more true, dedicated supporters. I want that to be the bigger percentage of followers. I don't know. It's not about the numbers, honestly. It's just about the amount of people who are really there to watch me for whatever I put out. Um, oh my gosh, my knees. My knees have been hurting. I feel like my knee strength is all messed up. <laughs> Okay, a few more things, a few more things. I learned that it's important to vote. That's for dang sure. It's important to speak up. It's important to use your voice when it's needed. It's important to educate yourself on things that you are not 100% about and you to do the work for, for yourself to educate yourself on things, important things. Oh, I also learned that posting what you want instead of what is trendy it makes you happy, but it also makes you depressed at the same time. <laughs> now, I won't say depressed because that's a kind of extreme word, but um, you go through some waves, okay? Like some waves, let me tell you, all right? It's a bit frustrating because you realize that most people like to follow trendy stuff and it takes a while for you to find your group of, or the people, to, your type of people who like your videos it's just a very humbling experience to learn about that. <laughs> it was the best thing that happened to me this year. I started to post the things that I want to post that makes me happy. I found a very good balance of like hair content and then my other content that I like to put out. So I'm still, I'm not all the way there. I'm still trying to push myself to do more fashion videos and also and do other stuff, dance videos, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like I've definitely made a lot of progress in that department. It, it had me learn a lot about myself and what I enjoy and my passions and just putting out a lot of stuff, even if it didn't get that many views. And lastly, obviously the biggest lesson of all is just surviving 2020. I feel like 2020 humbled me. I definitely went through a big transformation. I'm just changing, still learning about myself and I'm growing and I'm stronger than I think. You know, obviously anybody who survived this year is. Learned a lot and that I'm a fighter and I don't give up and, um, and I um, have an amazing, amazing, amazing group of um, internet friends like you. <laughs> Seriously though. All right, I'm gonna go get changed now. I hope you've been enjoying our New Year's little party talk session. I'm gonna go change so we can turn up, <laughs> take some cute pictures, and uh, I'm gonna show you my outfit really soon. Hold on. OMG, are you guys ready? You are not ready. Oh my gosh. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. I'll do a full look later, but this is uh, what we got so far. Okay, let me put my lip gloss on because my lips are dry. Oh my. Whoa. OMG, you guys ready to get the party started? Get the party started. If you're watching this after New Year's, then you know, you guys know how it was. Hopefully you had a great New Year's. All right, but let's hurry up. We still have a few more things to do. So now it is time to go back into time, go look at the previous video that I did and see if I accomplished the goals that I set for this month. And then after that, we will make our own goals, okay? I still wanna post three times a week on YouTube. I feel like I did okay, what do you guys think? I think I posted, I mean, I started posting Vlogmas, so does that count? I think I'm gonna say I did pretty okay. Like I didn't hit my goal, but I I would give myself, uh, I would give myself a, uh, eh, kinda, yeah. I feel like I posted a decent amount this month. Not as much as I wanted to, but I didn't slack off too much. Especially because I'm not gonna necessarily do vlogmas. I lied. I wanna do yoga every day because I have been so stiff. Nope, did not do yoga every day. Did yoga maybe two or three times this whole month. <laughs> 
and I still feel a little stiff. Eight. I want to do yoga to stretch on my body so my bones aren't cracking every time I freaking go squat to pick up something. Bones still crack every now and then. <laughs> I want to work out at least three times a week because I don't want to wait. Oh my gosh, who did I think I was, Superwoman? I literally worked out for the first time this month yesterday. Okay, mind you, I did go on a little walk, a three mile little run walk earlier this month, but that's about it. <laughs> I want to do more things that scare me, like posting more things that scare me. That Um, did I do more things that scare me? I mean, I did continue to post. I Vlogmas scared me, definitely. So I'll say yes. I did post some, I like, as far as posting wise, I did that. That scared me. Um, I tried some new foods on Thanksgiving that my mom made me. That scared me because trying new foods makes me anxious. Um, I think that's about it. I didn't do too many scary things this month. <laughs> oh, I did do the Bantu knot. Look at me being all daring and scary and daring. I want to do more giveaways and give back. I did that! I did that! Hey! Ho! Hey! Ho! Look at me! Accomplishing goals. Okay! Wow! I didn't do too bad. I didn't do too bad. Now let's see. <clears throat> what I can do next month. I'm gonna challenge myself. My January goals is to, obviously, I know I said this all the months, but I do wanna work out and do yoga at least three times a week. I keep telling myself that, don't laugh at me, okay? I feel like I can do it. Especially after yesterday, after my workout, I felt really good. I was about to work out today, but I had so much you know, filming and stuff to do. I believe in myself, okay? <laughs> Even though I keep telling myself I'm gonna do this and I don't but I believe in myself I think just seeing my body how much muscle I lost next goal Get at least 80% of the things done that I need to Start the project that I've been wanting to do since last year when I put out to you guys that I was planning on selling Something a clothing item. I don't know if I'm gonna do merch. I don't even know if I like calling it merch but it's something I wanted to create and draw something, put it on a shirt, do something creative or maybe like a hair. I have been still doing some behind the scenes work on that. I came up with some new ideas and I told myself my goal is by my birthday. I really wanted to be able to present it to you guys and whatever but I'm gonna see I'm not gonna put anything out there anymore cuz I, I could talk a lot and then I'm gonna be looking crazy again next month but you know what I believe in myself again I know I said this in the past and I took you guys through a whole voting session and stuff like that but just know I didn't do it for reasons I, I paused it for you know good reasonings and just yeah but it's on. Next month, I'm not playing. I'm gonna be 25 years old, okay? Like, YouTube is not sustainable, and I wanna be an entrepreneur, and I've been out of school for how dang long now, and I need to, like, find something that I can actually do that I love, like, it's my passion, and I can turn it into a job, you know? Something that is sustainable, so we'll see. <laughs> the next thing is post three times a week on YouTube, and every day on YouTube and TikTok. Which is, you know what, I don't think it's gonna be a hard thing because I have created a whole bunch of content this year and I realized that I'm just gonna start posting clips from these videos and my future content and I'm gonna start doing what I used to do which actually helped me grow my Instagram page is posting clips from all this content that I create onto Instagram and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start doing that strategy again and getting back on it. Lastly, I just wanna have a great birthday like i'm turning 25 i think 25 is like a big deal you turn 18 that's kind of big deal you turn 21 that's major 25 it's like a good point like okay you're halfway through your 20s i know we're gonna be on lockdown so that's gonna be interesting I see so many people like celebrating their birthday on lockdown i was like oh i'm sure by my birthday everything will be normal nope 
I mean, at least we'll have a new president by then. <laughs> Overall, I've accomplished a lot this year. I'm so proud of you, Jess. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Um, even though it was like a lot of ups and downs, I did accomplish all the goals that I had set out for myself for this year, except for my business. I wanted 100K. I got to 100K. I had a, a small financial goal I wanted to hit this year as far as youtube wise and i hit that i went when tiktok came out i hopped up on it because i was watching gary v and he was saying how important it is to get on that trend and i was just my only goal which is bad <laughs> but i just was like you know what i just want to get viral once like i want to i want to know that i'm able to do it and i did it you know i had a viral video on tiktok and a few and i made the for you page a lot of times but then i just fell off which sucks um because i could have been doing so well on there <laughs> but yeah so i know that i make i'm capable of doing it like if i do it and i try and i grew my youtube channel even after changing it all up and thinking that i was gonna stop doing blah 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 my whole situation which again numbers don't matter but i feel like whenever my channel is growing i'm just hoping that it's just those people who are here to stay and who are genuinely here because you like whatever i put out and last but not least i made it <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I made it throughout 2020 without getting pregnant. I mean, I, that's not to laugh because obviously nothing's wrong with that. If you get pregnant and that's what you wanted, cool, that's cool. I don't want to get pregnant. I'm not. Not now. Like, you know. So I'm good. I just said that because that was like very common this year. You either got pregnant or there was a lot of like breakups and divorce and obviously things that happen for reasons and I'm just joking around like it's okay if that happened to you or anybody you know those are just things a part of life that happen but yeah I just want to end on a funny note sorry if that wasn't funny we made it guys we freaking made it oh my gosh I could cry I'm not gonna cry on camera I always get very very emotional on like the new year's because it's just grateful to know you made it to another year and I'm just so grateful for life. I do not take life for granted at all. And um, just be grateful that you are able to see 2021. All right, let me get up, show you guys my outfit. Here's the outfit for the New Year's. What you think? I'm sucking in my stomach so much right now because I'm super bloated. Um, I'm on my period. Once again, how many times am I going to tell you guys that? I am loving this. Like... This is so me. Like, I feel like the true Aquarius girl that I'm into. I, I'm pretty sure I've said that in one of my videos. But, like, you know how when you wear an outfit and it's like, this is so you. Like, this outfit just describes your whole style, personality, aesthetic, your whole being. This is me. Okay? My boyfriend bought me these leggings. I got this from the thrift store. How cute. I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh. This is totally me. And this is totally giving me, like... 70s old school vibes you know and then this shirt thrifted as well now we're ready to party it up <laughs> ah, that was a good luck sneeze for 2020 for the new year if you watched until the end leave three yellow hearts oh my gosh if you watched until the end i could just give you the biggest hug and biggest kiss on the cheek and i'm not even an affectionate person but like it means so much. So please let me know if you watch until the end. Okay, that's it. I'll see you guys next year. It's been fun. It's been a great year. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of us. We really made this. We crushed this year. We made this year our happy year. It's late, so I can't be as loud as I want to be because I'm not trying to be that annoying neighbor. See you next week.